We continue on today with our look at the Transformers Power of the Primes Titan Class Predaking by looking at the leader of the Predacon team and the last in our line of individual bots, that of course being this guy. It is Razor Claw. Ooh, sorry about hitting your leg, Razor Claw. But he's going to be our focus in the latest Got by True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gapot. I appreciate you stopping by and having a visit with us here. Please, like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe. Have some fun with us. Check me out everywhere. Have a look at Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, and Transformers, Collectors, and L. And this is Razor Claw. And I feel like I have to ask the question, like, can anybody really do a good Razor Claw? Like, his line mode is... <laughs> I don't really think it's a great line, but neither is that of the Unique Toys version, really. And it's arguable, in my estimation, if Leo Ducks does it very well. I do think that TFC Ares, and I'm going to give that nod right now, has a fantastic looking line mode. We have the robot mode, which is fine, and his torso mode is interesting. Certainly a little bit different getting there, but there are things that I really like about it. A couple of things I don't quite like about it, but one thing in particular that I really like about it. Anyway, enough of me kind of cloaking things in mystery. Let's head over to the table and actually take a closer look at this guy. And finally, we are at Razor Cloud, the leader of the Predacons, and <clears throat> I feel like the most stylized. Of the entire group, I feel like he is the most stylized, especially with this head. It seems heavily, heavily influenced by the model of Predaking and the model of this guy used in Transformers Earth Wars. And I get it, that's sort of the modern take on it, but it's very angular and less organic. Like, it's... it's uh, it looks very... Robotic, it, I, you know, it is what it is. It looks more robotic than G1. It looks more robotic than either the, the KO or uh, the Unique Toys version. Certainly looks way more robotic than Ares. And I'll say this, while I haven't mentioned TFC Ares a lot, because I think there's a lot of you needing to like a stylized version of Predator King in order to like that, I will say this. Of all the versions, official and unofficial, of Predaking that are out, I think that the line mode of Ares looks the absolute, hands down, bar none best. Absolutely. But, of course, that's just my personal taste. There are, you know, different takes. Maybe you like this guy the best. You know, of the five Predacons, in terms of the best offering, even though it's arguable whether or not the aesthetics are oversized for a chug display. The Titan class version just ekes out wins. Just barely. And of course that's arguable, but you know, like I look at it and I'm even surprising myself that they're eking out wins, but like you can't argue with it. If they're colored accurately, they're colored accurately. If their transformation is kind of smooth and seamless, you're, it's hard to mark it down. Even if in places it could have been a bit more creative. And I feel like they're taking a lot of different influences. And if the articulation is effective, especially considering their backpacks, then the articulation is effective. It is what it is, man. What about this guy? Well, I'll say this right off of the bat. Because this is the most stylized, I feel like he's probably the hardest one to grade. In terms of the paint applications, I thought that Leo Dux is not. I don't like it. I, I don't... The silhouette is just too off, even if the colors are pretty accurate. The colors there are about an eight and a half. Like, it's no mistaking that it's Razor Claw, but I don't like the silhouette. For Warlord, however, in terms of capturing the essence of the character, uh, it's a 9.5. It's almost perfect. Like, here is Razor Claw. And like here is Sharp Claw. And 
And like, this is really good, like, right down to the red hind legs. Granted, it would have been nice if there was some red outside here because the four legs should also be red, if we're being accurate. And that red would be accurate if we were talking about toy or if we were talking about animation. Now, I'll say this, it's really difficult to measure any of these by animation. I've said that before, so I'm not really doing it. Uh, but we'll talk about that a bit more. Honestly, in, like, this mode, about the only thing wrong with this guy is that this section back here should be yellow. There's a sticker on this guy, uh, the, the actual Titan, to make it sort of yellow, but otherwise, this guy wins. Like I said, I wish this was red. He does have his, uh, I guess, his shoulder cannons, and they're long, they're perfect when they're in there, the, the perfect length. I feel like these shoulder cannons are ATPT. I don't just, I don't know, I don't like them quite as much, personally. Now, to be fair too, the toy and the animation were really close here. Like, the animation had black forearms and hands. The toy just had black hands. But like, outside of that, they're pretty close. Pretty close. Oh, and the toy of course had a green face. Or, sorry, the animation had a green face. The toy had like... More of a red face, I guess. Yeah, anyway, either way you cut it, this to me is a more convincing line. In terms of line shape, the Leo Ducks probably is the most line like, but I feel like that this is the most accurate to the character. So taking that out of it, we're going to look at the one accessory that he has which of course is this huge cannon on his back and that is certainly accurate as well. Sadly, again, he does not come with a sword. None of these guys did. And this is very nicely molded. Uh, it's a big cannon, I'll say that. And it connects onto the line right here. I'll show you where, there's a rectangular peg here. I'll show you where it connects on the line. This also becomes part of Predaking's large arm cannon in combined mode. Remember that rectangular peg I just showed? Well, it goes down right here in line mode. Right behind the head of Predaking. Of course, before we get into Predaking mode, we need to get this guy into robot mode. By the way, the yellow that I was talking about on the back here, like sort of mimicked right here, maybe even mimicked right here. I'm trying to mimic it up here. And like, is this supposed to be his tail? His lion tail, his tail is supposed to be red. And that's something that the Warlord version does have. And it's something that the Ares version has. I think the tail on Leo Dux is black, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody can correct me on that. Maybe it is red. But this guy doesn't, like, I don't know. Does he even have a tail? I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so putting this guy in robot mode, it's not that bad. We push these back. By the way, they shouldn't be like all the way out like this in his beast mode. It, they're only supposed to be out like this, like part of his mane. So we put those back. Then we pull this down and we pull the shoulder out. Pull this up and we can bring it around. So again, we pull this down swivel it around, pull the shoulder out, and should be able to bring this in. Then, oh by the way, though I didn't show it here because I gave him his own review at the very beginning of all this, here we have Onyx Prime in here, so kind of the introduction and the unboxing, I gave him his own review and focus on him, but he fits in here and he does come out nicely and fit in nicely. Naturally, you can access it in this mode, robot mode, or combined mode. So we bring this up, we turn it around, and we flip up the head there. And I guess we'll stand him up just like this, and we'll bring down an arm, and bring down another arm. We will rotate out a hand, and 
turn at the bicep so that we have our elbow facing forward and our hand facing forward. We again turn at the hand, rotate at the bicep this way. And there's the upper body done for this guy. We, as you might expect, unpeg and unpeg. Now this time it's not the feet that are pegged into anything and I know he's going at a screen but we're focusing on the lower body here now. Anyway, what we have is a slot right here on the shin that goes over right here. And it's angled, I, I guess, in a very specific way. There are, are like a couple of hinges down here and you need to have an angle just right to get the slot on over the peg but once you do it's pretty good. As well, these pieces here, these flaps here on the side, there's a rectangular slot, uh, no, rectangular peg, sorry, right here, and that rectangular peg goes into a slot up on the thigh. So you get these down, and you want to get the paw down behind. You may even wish to put the paw up like this, and same over here, you straighten up the two hinges so they're kind of parallel with each other. You bring the paw up if you're so inclined. And now you need to uh, use this rectangular peg here and get it into this slot here. I do find that that's kind of a chore, but it really only is a chore because you have to make sure you have all of the hinges like in the right place to make it happen. But in the end, boom, here we have Razor Claw. And I do find that pegging those leg pieces in is easier if I could start to bend his knee. I don't know if it makes the hinges go correct or what, but I do find that it's a lot easier that way. I like this guy, and I do feel like he's more animation accurate, except for the lion head. The lion head sticks out to me because it's not really. <laughs> you know, I... I wish that I could explain it more, and I think the only reason that I believe this guy to be so animation accurate is because his hands and his forearms are black instead of just his hands. Of course, all of that being said, if you've been following along, then you know by now that I'm not really measuring these guys in terms of their animation accuracy, because the animation varied so much, I'm measuring them in terms of their toy accuracy. And in that regard, we already know that because he doesn't have red paws in line mode, he's sort of down the slope just a little bit. I mean, it's not bad, it's just, it is what it is, it's down the slope a little bit. What about the robot mode? Well... He has black going up his forearms, and if we're talking about toy, now the thing that was a strength for animation accuracy is a weakness. It should just be his hands. Uh, he doesn't have red on the front of his thighs. He should have red on the front of his thighs. Outside of that, is there really like anything else I could... point out in terms of accuracy or inaccuracy? Not really. Uh, no, I don't think. Uh, his feet should be red, not black. I guess you could point that out. Outside of that, not really. I wish that there was a little more prominent orange around his, like, line head. But, like, that's, that's not really... That's just me, like, that's not anything wrong with it because the orange is there. I would say that when it comes to the paint apps, as where the KO was, as where the KO was maybe like an 8.5, and where the Warlord version was somewhere between 8.5 and 9.5, I can't really remember now. I would say that this guy is, I don't know, like he's an eight. Like you know who it is, but there's a, a, like a lot here that's not quite right. I like it though, I, I don't get me wrong. I, I kind of wish that his face mask and his eyes had something different done. Maybe, maybe, I don't, I wouldn't want it all red. 
though that'd be accurate. It's just, I don't know if I like black. Like a black eye visor, that seems so menacing. Yeah, we'll say, we'll say he's about an eight. It's all right. It's a good silhouette form. I don't know if it's the best iteration of the character. In fact, of all iterations of the character, uh, while I know that most people might disagree, I think that this guy is hands down the like truest representation of the character. Now, here's the funny part. This guy is your average Voyager size. These are both Voyager. This guy is a little bit bigger. This, of course, is the Unique Toys Warlord version of the character. And this is really close to animation accuracy. If he had red down the front of his leg right there, he'd be pretty well spot on to the, not animation, toy accuracy. Taking that out of it. So right now this guy's getting about a, like an eight. And like that's a good mark, I guess, I suppose. Here he is, he's big, he's bulky. Like he has a good silhouette. That's the thing. Here he is next to Power of the Prime's Rekgar, who I looked at in episode 433. He's obviously way bigger than a deluxe. Here he is next to your average Power of the Prime's Deluxe, that being Alita 1, and, or not Deluxe, uh, Voyager, that being Alita 1. And like, he's he's bigger than that, you know, bigger than what Starscream would be. So he's a big Voyager, I guess. Now, like, if, if you watch the, anim the animation, he's about the same size, I believe, as Springer. Springer's a Voyager, so, like, Voyager seems about the right size here. Taking that out of it. While he's probably a big Voyager, he, like the rest on his team, is not quite leader class. Like, he's not as big as Optimal Optimus, who I looked at in episode 432. I don't know, I find this guy hard to score. Like, I want to score him like a 9.75, but I know that there's things inaccurate about it, and I know that there's something about the lion head that's not quite right. And I know that there's red missing here. So, I, I'm, it's an eight. Like, the fan of me wants to say 9.5, objectively speaking, it's really about an eight. Articulation. Well, I think that's where this guy can actually really win. The articulation on... Um, the Unique Toys version is only about a 6.75, maybe a 7, because there are kind of limitations to the shoulders and a couple of the joints are a little looser than I'd like. In terms of the KO of Leo Ducks, that's a 5 at best. It's probably a 2. It's garbage for articulation by itself. The actual Leo Ducks, that's, that's about a 9. It's pretty strong. What about this guy's articulation? Well, the head can go left and right look up, not really look down. This of course can open up and you can access the matrix inside. The shoulders, they can go way out, rotate all the way around. We have 90 degrees at the elbow, <clears throat> a nice tight bicep swivel. He has no waist? Ooh, no waist. Really? Wow. Okay, no waist. Leg back, the hip skirt gets out of the way, forward about that far, knee under 90 degrees, and he has an ankle tilt, oh and he can do the splits the best out of all of them, go figure. His legs are the most limited and he can do the, split, the splits the best of all of them. Um, I thought that his articulation was better than it was. It's not that it's bad, it's just he's missing a waist, his hips could go a bit further forward, his knee could have a little more of a bend. He is not as bad as the KO Leo Ducks. Probably not as good as the actual Leo Ducks. I would say that his articulation is slightly better than this guy. If not the same, I'm going to say 7.5. I'm going to say 7.5 for his articulation, which it's not bad, but I thought it was going to be a bit better than that. I color me surprised. So we have an 8, we have a 7.5, he's a 7.75 so far. I thought he was going to do better. I'm not going to pretend like I'm not absolutely shocked because I thought he was going to do better. Okay, so we have one more mode to go to and we still haven't scored the transformation. This was easy to get to. Because, I mean, you just brought, you know, rotated this head and brought it down, picked this up, 
took these out and rotated them around a bit and unfurled the legs and then pegged them in on the side. This was easy to get to. What about getting to Predaking mode? Well, that's also really not that hard to get to. We put the head back, we take this head back up, we rotate it around and bring it in. As if we were going back to his lion mode. We take this piece that's underneath here and we lift this out at the bottom. We bring these arms down underneath just like that for now. We straighten this out and we straighten this out and we Crack that back, bring this out, close it back up, and put this down. So like you open here at the waist, bring the head out, and then put it back down. Okay. Nice. We take the hand and fold it back in. We take the robot hand and fold it back in. We have a peg right here, and that will go up into a slot, if I can find it, right there, I believe. Bring this down, turn it the bicep, and yes, this flips up like that. There. So, I'll explain it again over here. You take this and you flip it up. You turn this so that the paw will say it's like facing down toward the bottom of the combiner. And then there's a, a like a peg hole right here in the yellow. And there's a, a, like a square rectangular peg on the paw that goes in here. Or on the, I guess the back of the paw. That goes in there. That goes in there. These are in by the side, that's up by the front. Now we're almost done, because that's the front of Predaking. What do we do about these legs? Some people have actually left them and like put them down over and under. I can see the argument for that because they'll sort of fill in the body a bit, but that's not what you're supposed to do, so we'll do what you're supposed to do, which is open these up, open these up. We act as if we're going back in our Like lion mode, I guess pick these hip pieces up for now. We make sure that we peg the peg over the slot. We bring that in on the side. And we do the same over here. Peg that in, peg that in, bring these back. And really, in essence, this is your Predaking mode. Some stuff will kind of move and get a little bit fudged when we put him in the combined mode, but the basic way that it works is we have a slider here that one arm slides down over, a slider here that one arm slides down over, and down here we will end up really getting these up out of the way. That's why I said like this will sort of move. We'll have to slide this onto the wing pack and then this will kind of tab on the front of the wing pack. And then the wings will come up around the side. <clears throat> and when they come up around the side, they're gonna kind of tab in to hold, help hold all of this together with more solidity. But yeah, it's really the upper chest of Predaking. It's cool, it's not that hard. Transformation for this guy overall is, I'm gonna say nine. I'm gonna say it's a nine. He was, like he was doing all right with his eight and his seven and a half, he was 7.75, this is a nine. He's easily at eight and a half. He is easily at eight and a half. And honestly, that makes him the best of the Razor Claws. That eight and a half is enough to make him the best. Razor Claw is a hard one to do because he's got to do so much, man. 
so, so much that I, I get it. I understand why he's challenging. It is what it is, you know? But yeah, yeah, it's a win of a razor claw, but I'm not gonna pretend that this whole head and the way the mane is doesn't throw off the entire aesthetic to me. And that's a bit of a shame when we actually have a strong toy. And here we are once again, and I think that to actually enjoy this guy, you have to be cool with the main being kind of stylized. If you're not cool with that, then this is not going to be the Razor Claw or the Predaking for you. If you are cool with that, then maybe this guy is for you. Inline mode. I kind of talked about that earlier. Like, I don't think it's a great line mode. I, I get it. You're trying to do an awful lot with the guy, but I don't. I don't. I think the line mode is that great. I think the TFC Aries does the best job with that, hands down. Probably seconded by Unique Toys version, in my estimation. Certainly the coloring on the Unique Toys version is better. In robot mode, I don't like Leo Ducks. The KO, I don't like. I know the original is better, but I don't like the silhouette. I don't like Leo Ducks at all. It's not a figure that I enjoy. I think that this is infinitely better than that in looks. Not necessarily in engineering, but in looks. Uh, he has okay articulation. It could be a little bit better. Sort of hindered in the legs a bit. And the Unique Toys version is sort of hindered in the arms a bit. So it's a kind of a trade-off. At the end of the day, the Unique Toys version is okay and scored about a 7. The, uh, <clears throat> like, Jin Bao KO oversized. Feral Rex, Nero Rex, got about a six and a half, and that was me being generous. This guy is probably the best of the bunch. He probably gets a seven and a half, maybe an eight overall. Like, it's all right, it's just there's still things I see that could have been improved. Like, these t leg pieces tabbing in more securely than what they actually do. I like the guy, but there's other things I would have liked to have seen slightly tweaked on him that I think could have made him better, and personally, I wish we had a more traditional main. But plastic feels great, feels robust. This guy does not feel nearly as hollow because the legs of the, although it's not done very well there at the moment, the legs of the like beast mode fold down in behind. I don't know what I have done there. Like they fold down in behind and fill up the leg. Like I think that's, I think the rear leg transformation is sort of genius to be honest with you. Anyway, even though this guy's not perfect and even though I think the weakest of the bunch would probably be Rampage, overall, as individual Predacons, it's a pretty solid group, but we'll talk about that more next time. For now, let me know what you think about this guy. Do you like him? Do you not? Do you think he's a win? He feels pretty good in hand, and he looks pretty good, like I said, if you're okay with a stylized mane. I want to thank you for dropping by for giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I know how important it is to you. Please hit that subscribe button. Stay with us now. And um, I guess the only thing left to say is I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit when we combine Predaking into his huge gestalt mode right here inside the videos.